Welcome to One on One, the Daily Items weekly digital program featuring Susquehanna Valley newsmakers interviewed by Daily Item reporters. Today's guests are Barry and April James of Prehistoric Journeys, interviewed by reporter Justin Strasser. SMC is where you want to be because they have the largest selection of new Ford trucks in all of Central Pennsylvania. And that means the biggest savings. Take up to $13,500 off on new F-150s. And SMC has them starting as low as $26,669. Welcome to One on One. I'm Justin Strasser. Today, our guests are Barry and April James. Um, They are the owners of Prehistoric Journeys outside of Sunbury. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Nice to see you guys. Hi. Again. Um, so our viewers out there might not know what who you are, what you do. Uh, I, I think of you guys as one of the best kept secrets here in the Valley. <laughs> um, people are always really surprised when I tell them that we have our own very vertebrate paleontologist uh, outside of Sunbury. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves and prehistoric journeys, you know, what happens out there in that big old barn? Well, we, we fortunate enough, we moved here from uh, Santa Barbara and I'm a vertebrate paleontologist, and my wife and I, April, uh, 31 years ago, started this business called mm-hmm. Prehistoric Journeys. And what we do now is basically put real dinosaur skeletons for museums and clients worldwide. So uh, we're fortunate enough to get these animals sent from Wyoming or Montana to, to the workshop here. And we're doing it in an 1895 chestnut wood you know, barn, which is just you know, incredible. It's massive there. Yeah, and, and that's what you need to put some of these. Dairy you know, barn, yeah, an old dairy barn. It's originally been a dairy barn, so it's in very good shape uh, because it was a dairy barn. Uh, it was cleaned. Apparently, from what we've learned, uh, they're they're better with the cleaning of it, so it maintained the integrity of the barn, and we've maintained it beyond that. So. And there's usually always bones out there or fossils. Always and, bones yeah, out they there. Sometimes we have a big project, but even when we don't have a, a mm. big project, a skeleton, uh, we always have small pieces there, that, you know, elements of dinosaurs. Do you often hear that same reaction that I said about, like best kept secret, not quite sure that you guys are around? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we, we really tried to do stuff with the community. And we tried to put it, our goal to move here was to take the uh, school, the Edison, Edison school, school, and turn it into a museum. And so that it would be this, the town's museum and it would attract people. And those people would take kids downtown to go to mom and pop restaurants. And it would be built up and it would be just like Lewis. And that never panned out. So much red tape yeah. and politics, mm-hmm. even when it was free. You know, we have other projects we want to do for the cold city, you know, cold towns and... <laughs> it's, it's difficult to get stuff done. So why Sunbury? Why the Susquehanna Valley? Why not Montana, where all the action is happening, or, or uh, another state with, you know, digs? Well, actually, uh, Barry's uh, aunt and uncle and uh, their friends, um, Art Bowen and Karen Bowen, came out to see us in Santa Barbara. They came to visit us at our dinosaur valley out in Santa Barbara. And we were thinking about, you know, we knew we wanted to open a museum, Mm -hmm. and we just weren't sure where. We had checked some places in California, and it just didn't seem viable. And they said, you should really come and check out the central Susquehanna Valley. And um, because it's building up, and they're doing, you know, revitalization and so on, and it would be a great place. And we thought, oh, boy, you know, we didn't really want to move back east. We both were from back east. And uh, but we came out on a weekend, and uh, the third place we saw, we just basically bought it on the spot. We fell in love with it. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, we yeah. needed something really big mm-hmm. to yeah. go ahead and put dinosaurs. I wasn't going to start building a building. In a, or, or and, garage, and the other key you know. thing was, we really wanted to do something to help the town out, and you know, and get information to children because. Nobody can go to a museum and just touch the dinosaurs. Right. Even the professionals have to wear gloves. Mm-hmm. And the concept of revitalization, it seemed a perfect tie into what we wanted to do. So, it, it, you know, we fortunately we found the, the, the farm and uh, the barn was big enough. Uh, we had a 3,000 square foot workshop in Santa Barbara that we had custom built. And uh, the barn is easily that, if not more. And, uh, and also it was big enough that uh, Barry's goal is always enough room to throw the ball for our dogs. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's still our property. And all so, the cats, I think. Right. You yeah, have we too, have right? rescue, rescue cats, cats, too. <laughs> yeah, so so it, it definitely worked out. Yeah. Yeah. 
So the last time we spoke uh, was back in September of last year. You, you established, help establish that little mini science center at Chief Shikalimi. Right. Yes. And so they got a replica of the Tyrannosaurus Rex skull. They mm-hmm. got uh, sauropod bones, a couple other uh, fossils. So I was a little jealous, but you brought a, your own little mini science center with you today, right? Yeah. yeah you got a couple have, things. Yeah, yeah it's just a few things. Uh, yeah. what, what, uh, what do you have to show us today? Well, <clears throat> this is a replica of one of the T Rex teeth. So okay. this here is what would be you know, showing above the jaw, and this is the actual root. And um, this is when you did an arc. We did a, a scan of the T-Rex at the Sunbury Hospital, and you have a picture of the of the kid touching. They yeah. Had, they got a chance to touch the real, the, real the teeth and stuff like that. And that's just a replica. This is a replica. But this is how big it would be, right? This is exactly how big it would be. Is, and then under the, here, where this groove is, there would be another tooth. So as this one fell out, another tooth I was going to say, is it um, designed like the that big because... It's dug in there. It's it's, it's yeah. strong. The T Rex are are you know some of the other carnivores they have like uh, teeth like a blade, mm-hmm. like a knife blade. The T Rex has got one that's you can see how big it is. Okay. I mean it's just big and round. It's it's made of crushed bone. Okay. And then uh, this is just a real toe bone from a, a sauropod. So the this motor. is the real thing. This is the actual mm-hmm. real bone. Am I allowed to hold oh, it? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So what uh, which sauropod is this from? That's from an Apatosaurus. Okay. And the one key thing here about the dinosaur bones, you can go out like you, like you were saying, Montana, Wyoming. Mm-hmm. I could have moved out there and lived there for 50 years and never found a skull or skeleton. I mean, there's a lot of pieces. See, there's a lot of people out there digging. When they find a skeleton, then someone notifies us and we notify our museum. And yeah, we're, we so never in the field. We've done more skeletons than anybody's ever done. Mm-hmm. And one last dinosaur bone, this... I, for That's 30, a little tiny thing. 32 rare. years being in the field, this is the femur, the right femur, the upper leg of a duck-billed dinosaur. And you got a quarter here. To show how big it is. That's a, that's a uh, adolescent, so that was a baby, a baby one? Baby. Baby. Okay. A baby. Just, you know, probably the egg broke and maybe it died or something like that or whatever, and this is the only bone that was... Very, wow. very difficult and rare to come across. Because they're so, so. small? Is that why they're... Yeah, like, yeah. They're, because they're they're they difficult. usually break up and, and yeah. shatter and okay. that's it. Okay, okay. Um, so is this a replica of the one that you were... Of the T-Rex, Of yeah. the T-Rex that you had? Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about the T-Rex. Um, you know, what? there's a lot of debate, I think, among whether it's scavengers, whether they were hunters. You know, what's, I, what's I the, think, personally, as a paleontologist and everything we know, I think it did both. Okay. Just like yeah. you would be with a, with a wolf. If there's a dead deer, then they're going to scavenge, scavenge it. Okay. Otherwise, they're going to hunt. I mean, the, the other thing is the T-Rex had powerful legs. It could run at a good speed. Mm-hmm. If it was just a scavenger, you wouldn't need that. Yeah, they were very successful, so they had to be adaptable to the environment. And, and so, obviously, it seems to us that they would encompass both areas. And that big skull is made to, you're running after an animal, you make one bite and that's it. Some mm-hmm. serious damage. If it was a scavenger, you wouldn't need all that powerful, you know, skull. Right, stuff. right. And uh, the Apatosaurus here, the bone you brought, how big did these guys get? This one is, is the same size we, we uh, set up in Abu Dhabi Airport and stuff like that. So this is about uh, 80 feet long. 80 feet. That's, yeah. that's massive. Yeah. <laughs> And the one we put down uh, in, in the Capitol and was at the a, ar- National Armory was here. An, uh, a, um, a plat- a, um, the Plotticus, and that was uh, 84 feet long. Okay, okay. Now, have you, uh, we had Jurassic Park, or Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom come out recently. Have right. you gotten a chance to, to see that? I haven't that? gotten to see it yet. Not no. yet, no. You, you saw the first uh, Jurassic World? I saw one? all the other ones. Yeah, right. okay. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would what do they do well in those movies, and what do they not do so well? What's what's not so accurate? <laughs> well, I think the stuff they do well is the dinosaurs and the movement of the dinosaurs. I think that's the most key thing. Okay. I mean, they're making them, bringing them really back to life the way they are. Because they do talk to technical people. They're not just cartoons. Mm-hmm. So they are, and this latest one apparently is supposed to be even more advanced. So you really get, everyone gets a chance to see what they really were like. And what do they not do so good? What What are some of the inaccuracies that you shake your uh, head at as, well, a, as a paleontologist? Well, the, the title and the T Rex um, is not Jurassic. So right, right. Yeah, yeah. That would be the main thing. But you know, I don't think Cretaceous World would have had the same <laughs> impact as uh, Jurassic World. I think the biggest thing is that if you really did put all that money into a park you wouldn't have it that the dinosaurs would escape. But you need them to escape if you're making a movie. <laughs> yeah. Right, you know I mean? right. And uh, I think the, the, 
the big thing is like the raptors are supposed to be more bird like. They don't look like reptiles. Is that yeah, they're more sort bird like. Yeah. Yeah. And that uh, the movies don't portray that as well as as, uh, as what the science is today, right? Right. Or they get the size a little bit bigger than what they would be normally, something like that. Like the raptors. Yeah. The yeah. raptors are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break and we'll be back with Barry and April James. Four city blocks of new Ford trucks. Over 40,000 trucks sold. SMC is where you want to be. Sunbury Motors Ford has over 110 new Ford trucks. And during July, they'll include a complimentary accessory package. With the purchase of any new F-150 through July 31st, receive a tonneau cover, molded splash cars, and window deflectors at no additional charge. We're back with One on One. We're here with Barry and April James, the owners of Prehistoric Journeys right outside of Sunbury. Um, we touched on a little bit on the first half of the, of the program here about some of the uh, unique fossils that you've worked with. Um, one of them I'm thinking of was Apollo, and that was a Bronto Diplodocus, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. that um, you got were able to have that displayed at the state Pennsylvania State Capitol. Right. You had it here at the Sunbury Armory. Mm -hmm. What was it like working with such a massive uh, fossil? That was really impressive because... Um, it was supposed to go uh, overseas to, uh, I think, uh, Taiwan or something, a museum. And we were able to talk to the people. And if it wasn't for Representative Merle Phillips and Linda Carver and stuff like that and their staff, uh, we wouldn't have been able to show it down at the Capitol, you know. And then uh, we had talked to Merle about putting it in the armory so that people here could get to see it. And for five days in the armory, over, over 25,000 people got to see it. But the unique thing was they were able to get up close. We had a vertebrae that the kids could touch and stuff like that. And everybody got together, whether it was the military people, got the Jeeps and dressed in uniform. Uh, some people brought elderly and uh, handicapped children there to mm -hmm. see it. You know, So where children don't get a chance to go down to Harrisburg or down to Philadelphia or Pittsburgh to see something, it was right here for them to get up close and see something. And that's what makes it... And they remember it. They still... Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, two days ago, I was uh, at a store, and somebody came out and mentioned how much that meant to their children. Uh, they had taken their children to mm -hmm. the armory. That's a few years ago, and, you know, they still remember it. So it definitely has an impact, and that's an important aspect for us is to, to, to work with the community and to share with the community... Um, obviously, we're limited as to what we can do at our, uh, you know, at our workshop, but we always try to do outreach, mm -hmm. as you well know. So, and and it was really neat because I got to go down there and then cover it uh, down yeah. at the state yes. capitol, and it was really cool to see like the massive dome of the capitol with this yeah, giant oh. skeleton wrapped around it. it and I, if I remember correctly, it was. Um, you could walk underneath the tail yes, towards exactly. one of the wings. Yep. So I think that was kind of neat. Yeah. Um, did you get a lot of good reaction from the state employees down there? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And I'll tell you, if yeah. it wasn't that Merle had the connections and would do something like that, there's never been a dinosaur in any federal building in the United States. Yeah. No. And here it was. This And it, with the way we mounted it, it fit perfect. So when yeah. you walked in, the head was 17 feet up in the air. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And you worked really close with Merle uh, before yeah. he passed. Yes, we did. Um, yeah. yeah, I think he, he had a proclamation for you guys. Mm -hmm. he, he worked really close with you, with you guys. We were uh, very good friends. Yeah. And we're still friends. Uh, when we did the uh, uh, grand opening for the uh, Mini Science Center at Chief Shikalemi, mm -hmm. yeah. we, we had Helen there, which was fantastic, and, and his son. And, Helen's his wife? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, his, yeah. And uh, so, you know, we're very close to the family. Okay. We love them all. They're very special people. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it was, it was Representative Linda Culver <laughs> to go ahead and push that, because we said we had a replica skull and we were able to do something. And it's the same thing, a lot of schools weren't interested. Even though but, it was free, we weren't yeah. charging them and for anything. And then the principal there, uh, he raised his hand right away and wants that, wanted that skull. And I said, look, I can put a real bone here. And you had these other cases. We'll fill the stuff up. and we'll call it. And now they, the kids can go in and touch a real bone. They yeah. see the skull. The chief and yeah. it made yeah. a big difference. And that's what we try to do. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. you know, pass on it. We're lucky enough to be and fortunate enough to work on these animals. We don't want to just ship them off and that's it. Right. So we pay whatever it costs to move it around. And we got to get permission from the client. But... Um, it works. And now, three years ago, you had Tristan the Ty Tyrannosaurus yeah. Rex, mm -hmm. which is the third most complete T-Rex yeah. yes. skeleton yeah. that ever was. Yeah. Um, 
the last I heard, it was on a three-year display in Germany. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that three years is almost up. It's staying there. It's staying staying there. Permanently or indefinitely? It's been very, very successful for the uh, Nature Kund Museum in Berlin. I wasn't uh, even going to try to pronounce it. I have it written down here. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's, it's a fantastic display and uh, exhibit. And they get, you know, we we still talk to the director, and he tells us they have uh, lines around the corner uh, still to see Tristan. Tristan well, the unique Otto thing with Tristan was not only was it the third, you know, greatest uh, number of bones, but it had three different bone diseases. Mm. Yeah, and right. Berlin has millions of dollars now in funding for research to do that. That's cool. You know? Yeah. And the coolest thing was that uh, Linda helped us go ahead and get, uh, we, we wanted to Skype Berlin. And she set it up that we had 500 second and third graders yeah. sit in that auditorium at the high school where the screen is 35 by 25 it's feet. It's almost life size. They loved it. They yeah. Loved it. And yeah. then we worked with the director over there and, you know. The, were, the, the children in, in Sunbury saw Tristan before the exhibit was open. Mm-hmm. And, and the uh, director, uh, curator, gave them a guided tour of it. So it was very special. Very special. Yeah. But one of the cool things is when you did the report, you wrote down on the title, the Shikalimi students are the first pupils to ever touch the real tears. Yes. And that's that's what the whole goal yeah. is. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. And that meant a lot to <laughs> With all the kids. stuff that's going on <laughs> with all the research, those second and third graders were the first ones to touch that skull before it, it was CAT scan at the hospital. So w- would you say that that's kind of, w- would that, the, 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 the Tyrannosaurus, would that be kind of a highlight of your career or, or is there something else? There's a lot of different. We went yeah. to Arabia and this and that. We went to different places, Mexico. You know, um, a T Rex is but a T Rex is, is the special. Yeah. yeah, there aren't many of them to right, begin right. with, and to have the opportunity to to do this and and Barry designed a uh, an, a, a skull um, uh, an articulation of a skull so that every one of the 55 bones of the skull could be taken off and researched independently without affecting the integrity of the skull. So that was also very special. Um, now, you've both been very passionate lately about unity, and, and uh, you and your crew members recently made a YouTube video right. uh, calling for some unity. Uh, can you kind of go over briefly about you know what that message is and, and why it's important to you? Well, the thing, the way the country is right now, uh, whatever your belief is and whoever you back, the bottom line is we are all connected and all care about our children and grandchildren mm-hmm. and the veterans of this of this country. I mean, it's family. And I think we forget with all the stuff going on where there's try, you're trying to, people are trying to divide the people. And the people have to remember, we are one. It doesn't matter who the leaders are. Mm-hmm. The country is made up of small towns across the United States, and it's all the families that matter. And we should be caring about our children and grandchildren and, you know, making our country better. When, we, when there's a, a perfect example is when there's a sports happening, there's thousands of people in that, in that arena that are cheering for the U.S. team. They don't look and say, well, I think he voted for this person or I don't think he likes children. No, we're all one. All together. We are one as one unity. And that's what the whole – actually, it all came about because – with the new Jurassic movie, there's this Pachyoslephosaur dinosaur with a dome on its head. Oh, yeah, okay. And I have, have done the real one, which is, uh, it has spikes, which is... The first ever. Yeah. First ever. It's called a Stigomolic. So my friend called me and said, you know, why don't you film that? Because now with Jurassic uh, World, you know, you may want to sell that and we can do something. And I said, well, maybe I'll do that. And then I realized if I do that and put it on YouTube. As a platform. As a platform, I can say now that I have everyone's attention with the dinosaur, mm-hmm. here's what we got to be looking at. Because it's one thing to be a politician and have all this money. It's another to be a down-to-earth person. So it's. Um, and, and I think the key is simplicity. You don't have to be an activist. You don't have to be out marching. You don't have to do anything spectacular to make a difference and to have unity. I think if everybody just smiles at someone in the market, I, I make a yeah. point of doing that. I'll smile at someone who maybe looks like they're all say hello or, or do something to interact. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing every single time 
they're very happy about it and they want to share. So, But well, one quick last thing. If people want to see something on YouTube, all they have to do is look up dinosaurs mm -hmm. for American families and they'll see the message. And that, that's sort of been a message that you've had for quite a while. Oh, yeah. Always. always. Uh, whenever always, I talk to you yeah. at, at different events and different, organi different or uh, organized events, um, you know, for the kids, for the for the community, that's always been kind of your mantra. Right, um, right. It's um, always been yeah. that way for us. That's good to hear. Um, so one last question before we go. Favorite dinosaur and why? We'll start with you, April. Why, what? I'm sorry. Favorite, favorite dinosaur, dinosaur. Oh, and why? Well, I'll tell you, there are many I love. Um, I love the Eriops. It's an unusual sort of reptilian okay. uh, uh it's a dinosaur, but a reptilian dinosaur. I, of course, I adore uh, the the T Rex. He mm -hmm. wouldn't. And uh, I've always been enamored of the duckbills we've done. We and and then the other thing, uh, Triceratops. We've done a number of Triceratops skulls, and and they're just so magnificent. And um, so. Uh, they're all my favorite. You can't help but love them. They all have a story, yeah. and as we work on them, we see their story we come bring to, them back life. to life, basically. And uh, cool. yeah, so is, so every one is special to yeah. us, and um, and we sort of develop the story as we're going through because the bones give us the information. Mm. Barry, it would be a Dimetrodon. Okay. That's before dinosaurs has got the big sail back. Oh, yeah, those, those are cool. were the biggest dinosaur, biggest animals back 285 million years ago. And we were fortunate. If some of these things have been sitting around for 50, 100 years, mm -hmm. and we're lucky enough to get those, and we you know, we're able to put them together. And hopefully we can always show them to the rest of the community. Which We've done great. 158 skeletons. More than anybody and else. More than anyone else. And there aren't that many people who do what we do. And that's not counting individual elements mm -hmm. like a, a skull or a leg bone or a tail section. So 158 complete skeletons we've done in our career uh, since we started the business. And all the major museums and all the major verbal paleontologists from around work come here to Sunbury to our shop. Mm -hmm. You know, so we always wanted to try to share all that with everybody around here, so that's right. what we try to do. And you make it happen. You do. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we appreciate everything you've It's always done. fun working with you. Thank it's you. something different and it's interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, Barry, April, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, for, today's, for today's edition of 101. Thank you for watching 101. We hope you will join us this coming Thursday at noon for a new installment.